balsamic honey glaze that we made before. I'm just going to brush it over the top. It's off the bottom, and we're just going to drizzle it right over the top. I just prefer to lay it sideways and cut through like that. And I turn it this way as I go so I can push the back. That thigh comes right loose. I just cut them up into large chunks and we'll drop them in the pan. Let them cook for a second. And I've got some fusilli pasta here, sort of that we made before. Just right on the top. Good of cooking for the seasons, summer cuisine. Hi, my name is Tom Small, and today we're going to celebrate the flavors of summer. So much changes in the world as the summertime comes around. The days get longer and much warmer, and all of the great watermelon is certainly great to eat all by itself, but it's kind of fun to put it in a salad. This is a salad that you could make ahead of time, and it would last all day. Take it to the lake with you and enjoy it whenever you wanted. So we're going to start by peeling a watermelon. Good this saltiness to it. I didn't break it up too small because I want to have some pretty good big chunks in there. I'm going to season everything with a little bit of salt and some fresh black pepper. Now because it's summertime and we want to be easy, we're not going to take a lot of effort making a big complex dressing. We're just going to do this real simple. Scallop. And I'll take a piece of prosciutto and I'm just going to wrap it around. I don't care if it wraps all the way around. I don't want to have too much prosciutto because if I do, it's going to overwhelm the flavor of the scallop. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to push it through and slide it all the way up. Because this is meant to be an appetizer, I'm probably going to do about four scallops per skewer, something like that. Um, if you wanted to do it as an entree, you could certainly do more. Very overcooking. Because I'm cooking in such a hot environment, about 500 degrees, these scallops are getting really, really hot on the outside. And so I want to make sure that I take them off the heat just before they're completely cooked through. What's going to happen in carryover is that the heat from the outside is going to make its way to the middle and finish cooking the scallop with really thin edges. But if I start by making a dimple in the center when it cooks, it's going to be perfectly flat when it's all done. So I've got the first one done. I'm going to set the paper right on top. Good sear so on the bottom of the burgers. You know, I'm using tongs to turn these burgers, and the reason that I am, instead of using a spatula, is if the meat creeped down between the grates at all and I use a spatula and I dug across, then I would just cut the burger open and make it much more difficult. This way I know I can get down in between the grates, get it loose, and turn it over. It's going to be much more easy to manage. Perfect way. So we're going to do two things. We're going to take just a little bit of olive oil. Don't need much. And I'm just going to rub it into the meat on both sides. Then we're going to take a little bit of kosher salt. Right in the hottest part of the grill to get started. And that's all we need to do for now. So we'll let them cook for about three minutes and we'll take a look and turn them over. After about two or three minutes, we're ready to turn our pork chops. You know, most of the time when working on the grill, I really think you only need to turn your meat one time. That's going to be plenty to get it cooked evenly on both sides. I think we tend to play with the food too much when it's on a grill sometimes. But it's a real simple way to use them. The weather's so nice today that I didn't want to go back inside and cook in there, so I just put my saute pan right on the, gr on the grill, and it heats up, just takes a couple minutes to heat up, and it's perfectly ready to use. So I've got some of my grilled vegetables. I just cut them up into large chunks, and we'll drop them in the pan, let them cook for a second, and I've got some fusilli pasta here. I'm just going to add that to the pan as well. It's going to heat up in just a couple minutes and be ready to go. We'll do some fresh squeezed lemon juice. A little drizzle of balsamic vinegar. Maybe just a couple tablespoons. And some oregano and green onions. I'm just going to take my oregano leaves and just kind of bunch them up nice and tight. And we'll chop them nice and thin. Add that back to the bowl. After about three minutes, my trout is ready to turn. And I can tell because the flesh has started to cook, I can see a little bit of caramelization on the edge. The, the eyes have already turned white, so I know that they're cooking well. I'm just going to get real careful with my spatula. 
and flip it over. And we're actually going to take all of the bones out of the chicken. And by doing that, we're going to be able to grill this in about 10 to 15 minutes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wings off. And so I'm looking for that joint that's right up there. And I'm just going to cut real easy. I'm using a boning knife and turn it out so that I can see the joint and then cut it free. I'm really glad I put those mushrooms on a skewer now because it's much easier for me to work with. See, my chicken's firmed up quite a bit and has started to turn white on the top. Now I know when I turn it over I won't get flare-ups and that kind of problem that I would have had if I started skin side down. We'll close the lid and we'll go another five to seven minutes and check them again. Cut through like that. And I turn it this way as I go so I can see where my next cut should start. That way the corn doesn't have far to go and it's going to land right on the counter where I want it to. So let's take that corn. I'm going to kind of pull my lettuce to the side and I'll put that down in the bowl first and then I'll take the remaining ingredients and just kind of put them over the top. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make simple syrup. Now simple syrup is something that we use in a restaurant and you can use it at home as well anytime you don't want to have to dissolve the sugar into whatever it is you're working with. So perfect for iced tea when you've got a glass of cold iced tea and there's ice in it and you add the sugar and it just falls to the bottom. Well if you had simple syrup and you served that instead then it would dissolve into the drink perfectly well. And it's only going to cook for a minute or two just pretty much to heat it through. So it's only been a minute or so, but I can smell that the honey's starting to caramelize. I'm just going to give them a quick turnover. We'll let them go for a minute longer. I'll just put it right on the top. And we've got the perfect finish to a summer meal. This is grilled nectarines with granola and yogurt sorbet.